folks coming and going and, and um, you know we've sort of bombarded you with instructions in terms of what we need for folks to do or would like for folks to do and thank you very much for uh, doing those things that we asked you to do um, just a reminder that uh, we're asking folks to come in the side doors at those uh, at those doors are the uh, communion options for you which is wine grape juice and then gluten-free with grape juice uh, bulletins will be in the pews if you have more people than you have bulletins on your pew, just go and steal one from another place. Just don't touch the pew, just touch just the bulletin, okay? Um, that is so that we don't have a lot of people handling the bulletins and passing them around and all that sort of thing. Um, it's just so good to see everybody, even with masks and having you all scattered around, it, it's, it's a delight. Uh, we've continued to have worship here. Um, we were taping on Fridays. We taped on Saturday, uh, Sundays for a while. Um, you know, we are all just sort of doing the best we can. And uh, I thank you for your cooperation. I thank you also for your faithfulness during these last seven months in uh, continuing to support St. Michael, continuing to support the staff. Uh, Chris is here um, helping. Uh, she's been just a trooper all through the last seven months in terms of uh, uh, everything we need in terms of technology, in terms of taping, in terms of all that, and then also just being a super person in the office. So thank you, Chris, for all of your hard work. And Malachi has kept us musical the entire time. So uh, somebody was mentioning today just what a great team we have here at St. Michael right now. And so we're very, very happy. Um, and Malachi has uh, done some special music for us and a concert and all sorts of things that we're going to continue to do as well during the uh, during the time between now and when we maybe get back to normal someday. The newsletter has gone out. Um, you should have gotten it electronically. Um, if you get it by mail, you probably should have gotten it yesterday in your mailbox. But um, lots of good information in there about what's going on and how we are actually trying to handle things. Um, other announcements. Uh, we don't really have. A lot happening um, meeting-wise, but we do have our AA meetings happening on Tuesday and Thursday here at the church and the fellowship hall. And we are still, uh, we are now doing the Bible study on Wednesdays at uh, 10 a.m. until 11.30. So, you know, please be a part of those if you would like uh, to do that. We are live streaming on Facebook, so we're excited about that. We're also taping it to put on YouTube and our website later today. Um, you know, I just, I feel, you know, that term cat on a hot tin roof, uh, that's what I feel like sometimes, <laughs> jumping around. Um, very sad to announce that Enoch Boozer, uh, Alice King's friend, uh, passed away this week from COVID. He was at Newbury Hospital for uh, a week or two and then uh, declined in his health and they sent him to Prisma Baptist downtown. Um, and unfortunately, he was not able to make it and... Uh, the, the family came in on Friday and, and said their farewells, and uh, he died three hours later. So we want to remember Miss Alice in our prayers. We want to remember Enoch's family, the Boozers from Stony Hill in our prayers as well. Um, just uh, sort of beyond sad sometimes when things like that happen. We also have some good news in the sense that Miss Helen Derrick has been uh, diagnosed with uh, tested positive for COVID-19. and appears to be doing very well, and so we're very happy about that. Alice also uh, tested positive, um, had a couple of days of, of sickness, but then she's feeling better as well. So we've had a number of folks in our, in our community, either friends or members, who have been exposed uh, and tested positive. So just take good care of yourselves, and uh, we'll try to take good care of each other as well. Any other announcements from the congregation before we continue? There are a number of instructions in our worship. We are trying very hard to, um, to sort of minimize any risk to anybody. And so uh, we've, we've reduced the length of our congregational responses. So you still have some responses, but they shouldn't be any more than a sentence. Uh, we ask you to keep your mask on during the service. Um, in terms of our hymns, we've divided them up into men doing one verse, women doing one verse, and then I'll do a verse every once in a while. 
the hymn of praise will be sung by Malachi and myself. So just pay attention to what the instructions are at each section of the liturgy. When it comes to the communion, um, I will do the blessing and we'll do the Lord's Prayer. And then I will say to the congregation, the body of Christ given for you. And at that point, you'll open the bottom part of your communion packet. And then I will say the blood of Christ shed for you. And then you'll turn it over and you'll take the uh, top part and uh, consume that. We ask you just to set that aside after you do communion and make sure that you take it to one of the recycling bins that is at all the doors when you leave, okay? And your bulletins. And your bulletins as well, so that nobody touches your bulletins after you've touched them. All righty. Who knew we had to have so many instructions in order to worship God? But, you know, here we are. Thank you so much for everything. God bless you. If I can do anything or Chris can do anything uh, to help you in your uh, journey through this uh, craziness, uh, please don't hesitate to call. Let's take a few moments. Thank moment. you all. Oh, thank you. Um, let's take a few moments to prepare ourselves silently for worship as Malachi plays the prayer. I invite you to stand if you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. 
Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your spirit to know those things that are right, and by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of st all stones and planted it with choice wines, vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned nor hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice but saw bloodshed. He expected righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalms. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow, and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You stretched out his tendrils to the sea and his branches to the river. You, why have you broken down its wall so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it and the beasts of the field have grazed upon him. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven, behold and tend this vine, preserve what your right hand has planted. A reading from Philippians, Paul writes, If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this, or I have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, 
I do not consider that I have made it on my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks God. God. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenant seized the slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? Those gathered said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death, and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to those gathered, have you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard these parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds, because the crowds regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Be seated. Well, good morning, everyone. You know, we are... Most of us, I think, some of you still plant a garden, but most of us are very far removed from our agrarian roots or our connection to the soil. But God has used in the, and, and God has sort of promoted this beautiful image of a vineyard. Now we may think of wine as sort of a recreational drink. We may think of it as something that we you know, might spend a lot of money on a bottle for a special occasion, or maybe buy the two buck chuck that we can use every day and have just a little bit every night. But for the ancient peoples of the world, wine was a staple. Wine was part of the overall diet that they had. It was, it was important. And part of its importance can be seen in the many, many times that God refers to, or the prophets refer to in their relationship with God, the vineyard as somehow connected to God. We have today the allusion to the idea that, that the root of the vineyards in the promised land came out of the slavery of Egypt and were carried forth from Egypt into the promised land. When the spies go into the promised land, as the people of God are, are sort of waiting behind the mountains, they come back and they talk about the rich, rich uh, land and the, and the beautiful vineyards and the, and the land flowing with milk and honey. 
And so this image of a vineyard, this image of God creating this vineyard called the people of God, is really hardwired into our faith DNA. We are a part of this sort of system that God has created. Now when Isaiah is speaking of the vineyard of God, he's speaking of the people of Israel. He's also speaking to a people who are in exile, who have had their homes destroyed, the temple destroyed, they are away from uh, in exile in another place. And God talks about this vineyard as being sort of the place where they are together, God and the people. God is the owner of the vineyard. And the house of Israel, the people of Israel, are the vineyard. And God has tended the vineyard. But the vineyard has gone wild. The vineyard has not produced good fruit. The people of God have been unfaithful. And so uh, Isaiah talks about this vineyard being trampled and, and overgrown and dug up. But Isaiah also reminds the people that God can replant that vineyard, that God can recreate that relationship, that God is waiting patiently for the people to recognize their need for God. And so in the Old Testament, you have this wonderful example of, of the people of God as the vineyard and God as the vineyard keeper. Where Jesus is in his ministry right now, as the story is being told, as this parable is being told, he's in the last week of his life. He has turned over the tables of the temple square. He has preached in the temple to the people of God. He's also challenged the religious authorities of his day and, and, and tried to get them on board with this new concept of, of God's relationship with his people and with human beings. Jesus is challenging not just the religious, but the political ideas that exist in that time. Jesus is challenging everything. Jesus isn't just sort of compartmentalized or siloed into one little sort of religious idea. Jesus wants the people to be awakened to a new reality, a reality of justice, of peace, of caring for the neighbor more than you care for yourself. Jesus is challenging the religious and political authorities of his time to turn this society around and no longer allow people to be abused by the system. Jesus is a radical as he talks to the people of God, as he challenges them to think new thoughts. And this parable is more than just the vineyard being the people of God. The vineyard is really the relationship with God more than just the people. Jesus talks about this vineyard taking, this uh, vine keeper, this, this owner, taking such great care. You know, it would be easy just to throw the vineyard out there as an image. But Jesus takes great care to lay out this idea that the owner of the vineyard put a fence around it planted the best vines, built a wine press, and gave it every single opportunity to succeed as an enterprise. How do we relate to that? How do we understand that? The most important thing for us to realize is that God is actively looking after us. God is actively challenging us and, and, and helping us and, and comforting us throughout our lives. God is this owner. 
And the vineyard is the church. The scribes and the Pharisees, as Jesus tells this parable, they begin to get a little bit uncomfortable. They begin to see themselves in these tenets. They begin to see themselves as the ones who have been given a wonderful opportunity by God to be righteous and to be just and to promote peace. And they have not done so. The sad part is they didn't listen. They didn't take that intuition, that, that sense that, that Jesus is talking about them and, and change their ways. They chose to double down. They chose to, to be more against God than they were even before the parable was spoken. I think Jesus knew this was going to happen. I think Jesus understood that the systems of oppression, the systems of, of people being crushed, are hard to turn over. They're, they're hard to give up especially for those who reap the benefits of a system like that. And Jesus knows that the scribes and the Pharisees and the political authorities, they're hearing this preaching, hearing this, this parable, won't look in the mirror and say, wow, I'm that tenant. They might actually see themselves as aggrieved. They might see themselves as the owners of the vineyard. But Jesus makes it clear that God is the owner of the vineyard. And we are together the tenants and the tenders of that vineyard. After the parable, Jesus doubles down himself. Jesus takes the parable of the vineyard and takes it one step farther and talks about the cornerstone the cornerstone of the faith life of the people of God. And how that cornerstone will be immovable. That finally it won't be the tenants who run the show. It won't be the tenants who determine who is saved and who is lost. It is God, God's self who will lay down a cornerstone that is so firm and so strong that the church will be built upon that cornerstone. So what is the cornerstone upon which we've built this church? The cornerstone that we've built this church on is that God ultimately wins. That no matter how hard we or others might try to game the system or, or, or you know, make ourselves great or, or, or you know, sort of impose upon others what we believe, no matter how hard we try, no matter how much effort we put into it, our wants, our selfishness, our actions will never be stronger than that cornerstone that God has put down and built the church on. It's hard for us to hear these words sometimes. It's hard for us to put ourselves in the place of the tenants who beat and kill the slaves and ultimately kill the owner's son, his only son. The interesting thing about this parable is that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Even in the real world, the owner would not give those wicked tenants the vineyard, knowing that they killed his son. The owner would not be gracious to those who killed the son. But God continues to be gracious to us whether we listen to God or not. God continues to bless us when we don't turn around and bless others. 
God considers continues to comfort us even when we use words of destruction that cause enmity between people. God is the perfect example to us of how we are to treat each other. In the vineyard of God, all have a place, all are valued, and all have worth. And we are challenged by this parable and by Jesus talking about the cornerstone to stop looking in the mirror and seeing the ruler of our lives, seeing the, the, the you know, sort of author of our destiny. We are challenged to, to look in the mirror and to see a broken child of God that is still loved and valued, who isn't cast adrift in the sea, but has that cornerstone of Jesus Christ upon which to stand firm, to challenge the ways of the world and the ways of religious and political institutions that destroy the spirit. We are given an opportunity to build and to continue to build to the glory of God. Amen. in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, you call us to work for peace and justice in your vineyard. Refresh the church with your life, that we may bear fruit through work and service. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Thank you for the abundant harvest of the earth. Bless and care for those whose hands bring the fruits of the earth to the tables of all who hunger. May we be inspired by your servants who care deeply for your creation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Curb the impulses of greed and pride that lead us to take advantage of others. Grant that world leaders seek the fruits of the kingdom for the good and welfare of all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer.
sustain all who suffer with the promise of new life. Assured of your presence, heal our pain and suffering, and equip us to embrace all bodies aching for wholeness of mind, body, and soul. We call to mind those who are struggling today. We pray for the President and the First Lady. We pray for those on our prayer list, Bill, Don, Tom. Gwen, Gwen, Helen, Helen. Clarence, Clarence, Gloria, Gloria. Alice, Alice. Alice. Mickey, Mickey, Scott, Scott. Sandra, 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 and Crystal. Crystal. We offer a prayer for all of those who are in service to our country. We remember especially today Tyler, Tyler. Samantha, 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 Victor, Victor. Phil, George, George, Griffin, Griffin Brian, Brian, and William. William. We offer a, a huge thank you to God for bringing safely home to us Grant, who has returned to us from Kuwait. May he be blessed in the days and weeks ahead as he makes the transition back into his family and his life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all managers in our community and all who seek employment. Give hope and a future to those who lack meaningful work, those who have been marginalized or abused in the workplace, and those who desire new opportunities. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Thank you for the saints who teach us to live faithfully in your vineyard. May our chorus join theirs until our labor is complete. Today we pray for Enoch Boozer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink. And send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you at this time to have ready your communion uh, that you received when you came in the door. If anyone has forgotten to pick one up on their way in, please raise your hand and the ushers can bring one to you. Good. Everybody has one. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. With all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. Broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. You may receive the bread. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. You may receive the wine. To you, O God, Creator, Savior, Comforter, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be our worship and praise, adoration and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Lord, 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ, and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Amen.